Hi there, everyone. My name is Claire Maxwell at Embodied Learning Systems. Today's video is about fluid leadership and how you can use fundamental, simple embodiment concepts and practices to support having more flexibility in how you function when you're in a leadership role. And, you know, there's a lot of leadership styles that people study in business school. Um, but what I'm really discovering for myself uh, is that, you know, different styles are needed in different situations, different um, skill sets, different energetic uh, qualities of energy are needed at different times. And so even if it's not comfortable, we need to um, be a little flexible in terms of how we're interacting with people. Um, a real simple example would be more authoritative or more resonant and more listening and more receptive. So those two styles uh, link up with uh, primary and secondary, which are movement concepts that come from developmental movement, which is a big piece of how I coach people uh, in my Alexander Technique practice. So uh, if you have a chair, I'm just gonna give you a little, a simple practical experience of this and then at the end, I'll come back and, and talk about how that might um, help you in a, in a complicated leadership situation. So uh, we're sitting and sitting in itself is a little bit of a receptive position. You're not up and active. Your lower half is folded. So any primary movement is a movement where the joints fold, your awareness and your attention softens towards your center, which is your spinal cord. And you're a little bit closer or your, your movement, your attention is coming closer to yourself and closer to the earth. So when we're sitting, we're already kind of halfway there. So what I'd like you to do is just begin sitting and being comfortable in yourself. And that's a way of finding out, um, you know, what, what your nervous system tends to habitually. So some of us are like this, <laughs> or a little bit more out. And some of us are even more like this. So isn't as much as you can, you want to find a balanced place where the weight of your head is balancing and your pelvis has a sense of balancing that it's not too fixed. And your attention is in your space. And what you're going to do is slowly soften your gaze towards yourself and maybe let the peripheral vision kind of soften in a little bit. I'm using my hands to gesture this way because I find it's a, a way I can describe my attention. And so my attention is coming down to the ground, maybe, I don't know, three or four feet in front of my body. And I'm softening my awareness towards my own skin and even my back body. So I'm, I'm aware of the space around me, but I'm, I'm bringing it in from extra personal space to para, para personal space to personal space. And as I do that, you might even soften your eyes or close your eyes and just let your hands rest. What you'll notice is that your spine, your front spine, will kind of soften and gather itself a little bit and the back spine will open. And if you can include the back of your head, even in this picture, 
so that you really let the back of your skull go, your spine takes a C shape. And this will not hinder your breathing at all if you let the weight of your pelvis tip back a little bit. You'll still have space if you put your hands on your belly for breath. And so as your diaphragm descends on the inhale, your belly will have room to expand as long as you're not pulling it too far forward. So you're really letting the back of your pelvis tip back. And your chest might move a little bit too when you're breathing. But it's really a whole torso movement. And so even though you're in a C shape, you could close your eyes, your awareness is down and in. And you can begin to really feel your feet spreading on the floor and your legs and ankles, knees and hips are soft. You feel your yielding into support into your chair and from the chair into the ground. And then you can kind of spread into that support. So if you let your pelvic floor spread and your feet spread and you open your eyes and you continue to kind of, it's like almost like a, a sense of coming forward and out from a, a little bit of a drop or push into the floor. Um, but it's a spreading push. And so now maybe your gaze is out in front of your body and you're looking at the space along your floor. And then you might even think almost as if you were going to look out and think about standing up. So if you were going to sort of come up and out of your chair, almost, and you can feel this movement in your spine where it starts to extend and you can feel the breath motion in the back body also. And then you can just rebalance yourself. So bringing the pelvis back over the chair and finding a balance of your head. And you could do this as many times as you want. It's almost like a breathing stretch for your spine to go into primary and use the support that you get from doing that to go out into secondary. Ah, so this is the first of a series of videos and we're going to take this more and more into movement. But metaphorically, if you're a person that's always out there, that's just a place on the continuum of this movement. And if you're a person who tends to be a little bit shyer and more introverted, that's just a place on this cycle of movement. So through exploring the movement, you can begin to let your nervous system um, maybe expand its range a little bit. And it's a great thing to do anytime you're feeling a little overwhelmed, um, you need a break. It just takes two or three minutes and it can be um, just to close your eyes and fold your body and let gravity take the weight of your head um, can be a real break for folks who are maybe a little more introverted and are facing some challenging situations um, at work. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Uh, stay tuned because I'm going to continue to explore these simple foundational developmental movement practices and tie them into how we can develop a broader range in our nervous system and in our interactive uh, style.
Peace and love. Thanks for watching.